Right, today's video, we're going to be replacing the front shock absorber on a 2006 Polo. Um, well, we're replacing the whole strut for a second hand one because the spring and the top mount on this one is broken. Not that you can see it on camera, but you'll see it once it's removed. Now, we're going to start by obviously removing the wheel to be able to get to stuff. So, we'll trim off. You'll have to excuse the background noise. Right, so now we've got to this stage. Looks like the uh, brakes might need replacing as well. But we're going to be taking this bracket off here. It's got a 10mm at the front. Um, if we turn it this way, now you can see that this 10mm here is quite rusty. So I'll see if we can get a socket on it. And if not, then I'm going to be using a removal tool. So I need to remove this 10mm to take this bracket off. Remove the brake line from the bracket and then the bracket can be removed. There's a plug down here that will need unplugging and then pulling out of this bracket and this bracket and there's another clip on the other side that holds it in. Then remove the drop link up here which is by the look of it 16. Uh, it will vary depending on if it's had the drop links replaced or not. And then once we've done that we'll be undoing this pinch ball at the back which is an 18 and then the other side is an M14 spline. So once all that's undone we'll be hammering the hub down, leaving the bolts in at the top, hammering this down until it's free of until the shock body is free of the hub. Then we'll undo the three bolts at the top to remove the strut. So now I've explained it, I'm just gonna time lapse the rest of it. Right, so now we've got to this stage, as you saw, I've removed the wire and the brake line out of the way and I was holding this out of the way whilst I was hammering it. You can see the separation here, but this is about as far as it goes before it starts uh, getting difficult to remove. And obviously if you're on the floor doing this, you won't have to find something quite as long, but I'm on a ramp so I'm going to get a long bar down to a trolley jack and push under this lug here to try and compress the spring a little bit. And then what that'll do is it'll make the the shock shorter so I don't have to hammer this as far down. And then obviously it's going to be easier. Yep. It's not my light off. Right, so as you can see, it's pushed the bar out of the way that we're using, a bit of scaffold pipe, but it's also pushed the shock out of the hub which is exactly what we wanted now we can go up top undo the three bolts and this will drop straight out all right now i'm up top i'm going to undo these three 13 mils one there one there and one out of sight from the camera at the back there and then as soon as that last one's undone the strut might fall out or it might just perch itself I've never had that happen before. The bolt snapped, my socket flew over there somewhere. Don't know where it went. Well, I spent a good half an hour looking for that socket and I have no idea where it's gone. So, 
I'm just going to use a 13 shallow socket instead for this back one. Hopefully it turns up, but if not, I'll just have to buy another one. Alright, so now those three are out. The strut hasn't dropped out, so we'll leave it where it is, pull the old one out, put the new one in, and then bolt it back up before we go back in the air to put the rest of it back together. There's the broken spring. There's the knackered top mount. Got bearings falling out of it. I'll replace the whole strut. If you, would, if you were to just replace the spring, you'd undo that nut at the top there, take your top mount off, replace your spring, put your top mount back on, or if you're replacing top mount, you replace that as well. And then what I'm doing next is how you put it all back in. It's basically just reverse. So there's the new one, complete, no broken spring, half decent top mount. So I'll put this one in. I might swap this bracket because the other one's got two of these plastic clips this has only got one but we'll see so we've got to put this in and then line it up with the holes at the top right so we've got a third bolt to match um, to replace the snapped one and then cleaned up the other two we put some copper grease just a little dab on each one before it goes in. Oh, not very much. Not very much on it. Don't need to be large because you don't want it loosening itself. Once you've got one started, putting the rest in is fairly easy because uh, that first one can hold the weight for you. And then we'll just tighten these three up. We won't tighten them down fully and just Crank it down a bit, and then crank the other two down so it pulls it up evenly. Alright, so it's basically a reverse of taking it apart. So, as you can see, this has got this plate on the back and this needs to go to the back of the knuckle or hub so then there's a split in the back of it and that goes in the split just to line it up sort of thing right so how I've got to this stage is got my bar put it through there so under the hub and over the drive shaft and lever it up so then it's in place like that Right, so I finally got it in place. Now I need to put this bolt back in, which is very rusty. So I'm going to send that on my wheel and then we'll put it back in place. Once that's back in place, I'll put the bracket back on with the 10 mil and then put the brake line in it. We'll put that cable around the back now so we don't forget. Just clips in there. Nice and simple. And then when the bracket's on, there's another clip there. And then I'll leave it unplugged for now just in case we need to move it out of the way for the bracket. So drop link. I'll go back in there. Just like that. Put the nut on it. Alright, so cleaned up the threads on this bolt. Didn't bother going right to the end because none of this till about there is inside the uh, the knuckle, so it's a bit pointless cleaning it up. However, I will put some anti-seize from here to here, all the way around, and then on the threads that are actually going to be having the lock nut on it, I'll just put a little dab on. Um, but I'll put it from here to here to stop it seizing into the actual hub for the next person that needs to work on it. Now, when I was doing uh, my apprenticeship, one of the mechanic that I was working with said, always put anti-seize on because you might be the next person to work on it. 
So don't be one of those arrogant or ignorant people that doesn't bother and just guns it on tight as they can and then whinges when they come to take it off and they can't get it off. Right, it's all back together now. So I'm just going to stick some uh, copper grease on here and then put the wheel back on. And job done. Thanks for watching.